Dramatic archaeological finds in this show, many of them hotly contested and super controversial. Jesus' tomb, subtly titled Gates of Hell. Ever wondered about the mysteries Turkey might be hiding beneath its vibrant fusion of Eastern and Western cultures? Packed with a rich blend of history, this nation has long been an intersection for countless civilizations. Today, as archaeologists dig deeper into its past, they're uncovering jaw-dropping secrets. From plants that defy belief to ghost towns reminiscent of fairy tales. Ready for a ride through mind-blowing discoveries that have recently surfaced in Turkey? Let's jump right in. Number 1. Remains of Noah's Ark Tucked away under the frosty cap of Mount Ararat in the eastern expanses of Turkey, an astonishing discovery has captured the imagination of explorers and enthusiasts alike. They believe they've stumbled upon the remnants of the legendary Noah's Ark, a tale as old as time, woven into the fabric of the Book of Genesis. For years, local folklore has whispered of Mount Ararat harboring this ancient vessel, sparking a multitude of expeditions, each eager to unearth a piece of history. Fast forward to 2010, a coalition of evangelical Christian explorers from both Hong Kong and Turkey declare they've hit pay dirt. At a staggering 12,000 feet up the mountain, they claim to have unearthed wooden fragments and structures resembling animal pens. These findings, they argue, align perfectly with biblical descriptions. To bolster their claims, they point to radiocarbon tests and satellite imagery. Yet despite their conviction, the scientific and archaeological communities approach these declarations with a healthy dose of skepticism. These experts call for a more rigorous scientific evaluation, arguing that the present evidence doesn't definitively confirm the discovery as Noah's Ark. Even if the fragments are of ancient maritime origin, it's plausible they belong to a local boat. Swept up the mountain over the ages, rather than the iconic ark depicted in biblical lore. As we delve deeper into this enigma, questions linger, skepticism prevails, and the quest for truth continues unabated. Number 2. The Derinkuyu Underground City Nestled in the heart of Turkey's Cappadocia region, a mysterious marvel unraveled itself quite unexpectedly in 1963, transforming a routine home renovation into the discovery of a lifetime. The Derinkuyu underground city, a subterranean marvel, stands as a testament to the ingenuity of ancient civilizations. This archaeological gem delves an astonishing 250 feet deep, unveiling a complex maze of 18 layers intricately woven together. As we navigate through this labyrinth, we uncover a myriad of tunnels, chambers, and sacred spaces, each telling a silent story of the lives once bustling in this hidden sanctuary. Derinkuyu was more than just a city, it was a refuge, capable of sheltering an estimated 20,000 inhabitants along with their animals and provisions. Dating back to the 8th to 7th centuries BCE, during the era of the Phrygian kingdom, it's believed that this underground haven was carved out by the Phrygians, an Indo-European group that once graced this region. This city beneath the soil was not just a fleeting moment in history. It stood the test of time, serving its purpose until the late Byzantine era. For centuries, this architectural marvel lay concealed beneath the earth, its existence unbeknownst to the world above. The soft volcanic rock of Cappadocia provided the perfect canvas for the creation of this intricate city. Narrow shafts punctured through the layers, ensuring ventilation, while massive stone doors could be rolled across passages, fortifying the city's inhabitants. In this underground haven, Life thrived. Stables, cellars, storage rooms, chapels, and even schools carved out of the rock, creating a self-sufficient world away from the perils of the surface. Water, the source of life, was ingeniously supplied through channels connected to rainwater systems above, ensuring a steady supply. In exploring Derinkuyu, we uncover not just an archaeological marvel, but a resilient spirit, a community that carved out safety and sanctuary beneath the earth leaving behind a legacy etched in stone. Number 3. The Medieval Armenian Ghost City of Ani Immersed on the fringe of Turkey, where it gracefully shares its boundaries with the Oran River and Armenia, lies Ani, known as the City of a Thousand Churches. This once vibrant metropolis now paints a poignant picture, echoing tales of its rich and turbulent history. Over 1,600 years ago, Ani emerged at the nexus of significant trade routes, blossoming into a walled city teeming with life, housing over 100,000 residents by the 11th century. As we delve into the fabric of Ani's past, we encounter relentless conquests and power shifts, witnessing the city's transformation under the rule of Byzantine emperors, Ottoman Turks, 
Armenians, nomadic Kurds, Georgians, and Russians, this constant change of hands coupled with the wear of time and the scars of human conflict heralded Ani's decline. Yet in its state of ruin, Ani radiates a captivating allure. The Cathedral of Ani stands as a majestic relic, a remnant of medieval Armenian grandeur, while the Church of St. Gregory boasts intricate stone carvings, revealing the artistry of a bygone era. Even the half-collapsed Church of the Redeemer, despite its state of disrepair, cradles fragments of original frescoes, whispering stories of the city's rich spiritual tapestry. As we explore further, the remnants of city walls, towers, palaces, and humble dwellings unfold before us, offering a window into the vibrant urban life that once pulsated within Ani's walls. This silent city, with its whispers of the past, continues to bewitch visitors, transporting them through time to the days when Ani stood as a thriving center of cultural exchange. So let's explore together and unravel the mysteries of Ani. Have you ever wondered how such a thriving city could come to such a quiet end? Or what stories the stones of its ancient buildings might tell if they could speak? Number 4. Yanartas, the Burning Mountainside Nestled near Antalya in the heart of southwestern Turkey, the mountainside of Yanartas unveils a natural spectacle that captivates and mystifies. Here, amidst the rocky cliffs, small flames perform a ceaseless dance, powered by the underground reserves of methane gas. This extraordinary phenomenon has coined Yanartas its name, translating to flaming rock in Turkish. Picture this, dozens of flames, unwavering in their intensity, illuminating the mountainside with a reddish-orange hue. These fiery beacons burn relentlessly, day in and day out, regardless of the season or weather. It's a mesmerizing display of nature's hidden forces, a spectacle that has continued uninterrupted for over two and a half decades. But what makes Yanardas truly magical is its ability to transform as the sun sets. As darkness envelops the landscape, the flickering flames paint the mountain face with a surreal, fiery glow, captivating the eyes and imaginations of those fortunate enough to witness it. It's a scene that beckons travelers from afar, inviting them to stand in awe of this eternal blaze. And as with any natural marvel, Yanartas is shrouded in mythology and legend. Ancient Greek tales speak of Chimera, a fire-breathing monster said to roam these very grounds. The hero Bellerophon, famed in Greek lore, is celebrated for slaying this beast. Today, the perpetual flames of Yanartas are thought to be the lingering breath of this mythical creature, a tangible connection to the legends of old. So what do you think fueled these fires for all these years? And how has the methane managed to maintain such a steady supply? Share your thoughts, theories, or any other fascinating facts you might know about this or similar phenomena. Number 5. The Ancient Titus Tunnel can you imagine digging through a colossal limestone hillside armed only with tools from over two millennia ago? That's exactly what the Romans accomplished near the city of Ania in southern Turkey. Behold the Titus Tunnel, a remarkable testament to the Roman architectural and engineering genius. This colossal conduit, spanning around 1,400 feet, is more than just an underground marvel. It was the ancient city's savior. 2,000 years ago, floodwaters menaced the nearby city of Saloya Pieria, threatening its harbor and daily operations. Enter the Romans with a groundbreaking solution, literally. The Titus Tunnel, named after Emperor Titus, who oversaw its completion during his short reign from 79 to 81 AD, wasn't just about grandeur, it was a necessity, its role, to ingeniously divert those floodwaters and protect Saloia Pieria. As you journey through this massive tunnel, you'd notice an intriguing Greek inscription that throws light on its imperial association. Emperor Titus might have the naming rights, but the inception of this mega-project traces back to his father, Emperor Vespasian. Beyond Titus's reign, the tunnel caught the attention of Emperor Antonius Pius, who undertook the crucial task of repairs and further enhancements in the 2nd century AD. The tunnel is an architectural spectacle. It starts with a generous width of around 20 feet, gradually tapering to a mere 10 feet. The arched corridor towers at over 15 feet high. As you venture deeper, the intricately carved niches and strategic air shafts catch your eye, symbolizing the meticulous planning behind this ancient marvel. Now imagine walking along this historic path, thinking of the Romans who once worked here. How do you think they tackled the challenges of building such a complex structure with the tools they had? Share your thoughts. Number six. Now it's time for today's subscriber pick. Picture this. Scientists in Turkey, immersed in their exploration, stumble upon an enigma, 
a hidden underground entrance, shrouded in mystery. Initially, the revelation of this entrance didn't stir much astonishment, but as attempts were made to explore deeper, a surprising obstacle emerged. The path was obstructed by an assortment of rocks, almost as though someone, or something, had intentionally sealed it off centuries ago. Now, let's journey back in time. The Phrygians, an ancient Indo-European civilization in central and western Turkey, were known to possess knowledge of a mystical portal, the fabled Cilician Gates. Legends whispered of this gate as a threshold to another realm, perhaps even the underworld itself. Can you imagine the stories and secrets these stones might hold? Today we're left pondering and piecing together fragments of the past. Were these ancient civilizations privy to secrets that have since been lost to time? What mysteries did the Cilician Gates conceal? Could there be a grain of truth in the tales of portals to other realms? We invite you, our curious viewers, to dive into this historical puzzle. What are your thoughts on these ancient legends? Could these rocks be a relic of a forgotten gateway? Share your theories and join us in unraveling the secrets of the past. Stay tuned as we continue to explore the mysteries that history has left behind. Number 7. The Ancient Lycian Rock-Cut Tombs Delving into the heart of ancient Lycian civilization, we find ourselves amidst a fascinating archaeological treasure on a hillside overlooking Myra's ruins. Here, extraordinary rock-cut tombs from over 2,300 years ago reveal the intricate artistry and profound respect the Lycians had for the afterlife. Carved directly into the stone cliffs, these tombs are more than just final resting places. They are monumental tributes, showcasing temple-style chambers adorned with pillars and detailed reliefs. It's a testament to the Lycians' architectural genius and their deep-rooted cultural practices. The ancient necropolis is divided into two significant sections, the river and ocean necropolises, each with its unique characteristics and artistic expressions. The rock tombs vary in complexity, ranging from simple arched nooks to elaborate multi-story temples, richly decorated with carvings. Most of these structures date back to the 4th to 2nd centuries BCE, marking a significant period in Lycian history. In the ocean necropolis, the rock facades come alive with vivid reliefs, depicting sculpted figures and scenes from the lives of the nobility. One particular tomb stands out, with its entrance featuring a remarkable carving of eleven life-sized figures, representing a noble Lycian family and their servants in a procession to the afterlife. On the other hand, the river necropolis offers a different visual feast, with tombs resembling Greek temples, complete with intricately carved columns and pediments. These structures, despite being centuries old and subjected to grave robbing, remain a profound testament to the Lycian's craftsmanship and artistic capabilities. As we explore these ancient tombs, we are not just walking through a historical site. We are stepping into a world rich with stories, art, and reverence for life and death. It's a journey back in time, offering a glimpse into the lives and beliefs of an ancient civilization. Number 8. Cheerful Skeleton Tucked away in the remnants of the ancient Roman city Antioch, now part of Turkey, archaeologists stumbled upon a captivating discovery, a mosaic floor vividly portraying a skeleton in a rather jolly demeanor, dating back to the 3rd century BCE. This skeleton, far from morbid, is found reclining leisurely on a dining couch, wine jug in hand, embodying the epitome of cheerfulness. Surrounding this whimsical figure is a Greek inscription, translating to, Be cheerful, enjoy your life a phrase that resonates deeply even in our times. This particular mosaic, aptly named the Bacalian Skeleton, was unearthed in what is believed to have been the affluent quarters of a Roman household in Antioch, situated alongside two other intricate mosaic floors. These additional artworks depict scenes of dining and bathing, likely adorning the triclinium or formal dining room, adding to the luxurious ambiance of the space. The dry conditions of Antioch have been a blessing in preserving numerous stunning mosaics over centuries, but this skeleton mosaic, with its playful and inclusive nature, left archaeologists particularly enchanted. Here, the ancient artist chose to depict the skeleton not as an ominous presence, but rather as an esteemed dinner guest, a jovial companion reminding us of life's fleeting nature and the pleasures that come with it. Some might draw parallels between this cheerful skeleton and the memento mori concept, a reminder of our inevitable fate, urging us to relish every moment of our lives. However, this skeleton seems to transcend that, celebrating the joys of life and the afterlife in unison, a remarkable message that resonates through time. 
With its vivid imagery and light-hearted take on mortality, this Bacalian skeleton mosaic provides a unique window into the ancient Greek and Roman perspectives on death and the afterlife. It portrays a society comfortable with its own mortality, embracing the fleeting nature of life with open arms and a wine jug in hand. Number 9. Dracula Dungeons Nestled beneath the historic grandeur of Toit Castle in northern Turkey, a maze of subterranean tunnels, dungeons, and secret chambers has recently been unearthed by archaeologists, sparking intrigue and mystery. These hidden recesses of the castle are thought to have once been the confinements of Vlad the Impaler, the notorious 15th-century ruler of Wallachia, whose brutal reign was the inspiration behind Bram Stoker's iconic character Dracula. Originally constructed in the 2nd century CE by Roman Emperor Commodus, Toit Castle later fell into Ottoman hands in 1393. It was during this tumultuous period that Vlad, alongside his brother, found themselves captives within these very walls, used as pawns against their father, who was challenging Ottoman dominance by aligning with Hungary. The discovery of these clandestine chambers, replete with brick arches, medieval tools, and stone carvings, parallels descriptions of Vlad's harrowing imprisonment and torture, lending weight to the belief that these underground spaces may indeed be the very places where he endured his captivity. While it is challenging to definitively connect Vlad the Impaler to these dungeons, the archaeological findings align seamlessly with the 15th century time frame of his and his brother's captivity. Beyond the potential connection to Vlad, these subterranean spaces offer a captivating glimpse into the complex regional power dynamics of the era and the strategic role Toit Castle played in these historical machinations. The dungeons and secret chambers were likely utilized by the Ottomans to secure political prisoners, fortifying their hold over the region. The ongoing renovations and excavations at Toit Castle not only serve to preserve its dark and storied history, but also provide today's visitors with a tangible link to the past. Though Vlad's time within the castle's confines was brief before he returned to his infamous and brutal reign in Wallachia, the alleged dungeon of his captivity remains an enthralling chapter in the Dracula legend, captivating the imaginations of all who delve into the castle's shadowed past. So, what do you think about this discovery? Do you believe these chambers once held Vlad the Impaler? Share your thoughts and join us on this journey into history. Number 10. World's Oldest Swords In 2022, the archaeological world was captivated by a remarkable find in eastern Turkey within the ancient city ruins of Arslantepe. Unearthed were nine copper swords, dating back an impressive 5,000 years to the early Bronze Age, making them what is believed to be the world's oldest surviving swords. These weapons, ranging from a modest seven inches to a substantial two feet in length, were discovered meticulously buried together in what was once a palace armory, now left in ruins after a devastating fire. But what truly sets these swords apart is not just their age, but the exquisite craftsmanship and attention to detail evident in their design. Each sword is adorned with intricate silverwork, an embellishment added at the time of their forging showcasing the high status and possibly even the ceremonial roles these blades once held. These delicate engravings speak volumes, revealing a society that not only valued their weapons, but saw them as an extension of their art and culture. It's a testament to the thriving center of innovation and specialized craftsmanship that Arslan Tepe must have been nearly 5,000 years ago. And the craftsmanship is nothing short of extraordinary. These weapons weren't just forged. They were created using a technique known as cofusion bonding. This complex process involved bonding silver ornamentation onto an arsenical copper blade core during heating and casting, a technique that was as advanced as it was intricate. It's a discovery that has left archaeologists and historians alike in awe, prompting a re-evaluation of our understanding of early metallurgy and craftsmanship. So let's ponder for a moment. What does this discovery tell us about the society that once thrived in Arslantepe? How did these craftsmen achieve such a high level of skill? And what can these ancient blades teach us about innovation and artistry in the ancient world? Share your thoughts and join me in unraveling the mysteries of these ancient swords. And there you have it, a journey into the depths of Turkey, unveiling secrets that have remained hidden for centuries. It's fascinating how these recent discoveries in Turkey are not just unearthing ancient structures, but also potentially rewriting chapters of our historical understanding. If you found this dive into history as intriguing as we did, don't forget to hit the like button.
Share this video with fellow history enthusiasts and subscribe for more compelling content right here. Have any theories or insights of your own? Drop them in the comments below. We'd love to hear your thoughts.